Now, I'm going to go ahead and start to open the program. I'm sure everyone's very excited to hear from our speaker tonight. Um, so thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight or whatever time it is for you. I know we have usually an audience joining us from all over the U.S. and even beyond. Um, you're free to share in the chat if you'd like where you're joining us from tonight. Um, but we're really glad to see everyone here. Um, just a couple of housekeeping things. Um, if everyone could change their Zoom name to whatever name they use to register with, that is very helpful for us to take attendance. Um, during the duration of this program, if you could please remain muted to respect our speaker and other attendants, and you may choose to keep your cameras on or off, whatever you feel more, more comfortable with. Um, we will have a Q&A session in the last 15 minutes or so of this program. Um, however, you may add your um, questions in the chat at any point throughout the program, and they'll be addressed in order at the end. Um, Sorry, just hi to everyone in the chat. It's great to see um, people joining us, even from Tokyo. I know it's quite early for you, so thank you so much for joining us. Um, to introduce our speaker for tonight, um, Tatsuya Morao, or TAD, is the owner of Kintsugi Boston. They specialize in traditional Kintsugi repairs, including workshops like the advanced level classes that are um, intermittently held at Crane and Turtle, a local ceramics um, and gift shop in the Boston area. They also do private um, commissions. Tad first discovered Kintsugi when he went with his wife to a um, vacation trip of her hometown in Kyoto and took a Kintsugi workshop together. Um, that's when he discovered his passion for Kintsugi and he has been working on perfecting that craft ever since. Um, we will now hear a little bit from Tad about himself, about Kintsugi, how it all got started, and thank you so much. Thanks, John. Before uh, we're gonna start, get started, I've been sick for the past week. So um, during the presentation, I might cough. Um, I will apologize beforehand. Okay, now <clears throat> let's get started. Um, my name is Ta Tatsuya Tat Murao. I'm a Kintsugi repair artist in the greater Boston area. I am so honored to be here, and I'm uh, excited to share the art history and the brief process of doing kintsugi. I hope um, you will come out this learning something about kintsugi. Um, so if you have any question, please feel free to pop them in our chat, as Joy mentioned. And, or uh, we'll have the uh, Q and A session at the at the end of the the presentation. So please um, ask them there. So I would like to start with um, a slide on the growing influence of kintsugi in pop culture. The with the rise of the internet and the awareness of kintsugi. It is often used as a metaphor in films and songs, such as the Amazon film Chemical Heart, the Kylo Ren's helmet from the Star Wars series, and the song called Kintsugi by Lena Del Rey. The contemporary artist Yoko Ono has done several art installations in pieces inspired by Kintsugi. The one seen on the screen is her most recent installation where she invites the visitors to mend broken pottery together using only tape and glue, twine, and rubber band. It is also seen in fashion like in the converse shoe seen on the screen in the middle. It's a type of metaphor that I think a lot of people can relate to. In our modern capitalist society and uncertainty of global warming, people are so sick of the constant newness and are starting to practice mindfulness, which include mending and repairing. So what is the kintsugi exactly? 
The kintsugi is the Japanese art of repairing broken pottery or glass using natural materials. The term kintsugi can be broken down into two words, kin and tsugi or tsugu. Kin means gold and tsugi, tsugu translate to connect or repair. While some people on the internet may misinterpret it as um, welding broken pieces with melted gold, but that's not the case. I will explain more in detail later, but in kintsugi, the gold is used only at the end of the repair process. The primary ingredients for kintsugi restoration includes stone powder, hemp, sawdust, raw urushi, and flour. To enhance the appearance, the metal powders are applied as a finishing touch. At Kintsugi Boston, we offer finishes in black or red lacquer, pure gold, pure silver, and brass. So now, now let's talk about history of Kintsugi. The history of Kintsugi dates back to the 15th century during the Muromachi period or Ashikaga period. One of the shoguns or military detector at the time was Ashikaga Yoshimasa, you see on the screen on the left. Um, <clears throat> He is often called the founder of Kintsugi. Yoshimasa was also the person that commissioned to build Ginkakuji, or silver pavilion, seen on the right side of the screen. After assuming the position of shogun, Ashikaga Yoshimasa received a beautiful green Chinese tea bowl. This is the, the tea bowl called Bakohan. You know, this bowl is valuable because there's a title. When Ashikaga Yoshimasa received it, he noticed that there's a crack at the bottom of the bowl. So he sent it back to China and hoped that they would bring a similar bowl back to him. But unfortunately, the technique to make such a bowl had been lost for a long time. So instead, the Chinese craftsmen repaired it. They um, drilled holes and stapled it up and sent it back to Japan. And Ashikaga Yoshimasa, known for his aesthetic Zen taste, he was not satisfied with the bulkiness and the practical appearance. It was not refined for him. And at this time in Japan, Urushi lacquer craft technique flourished in Japan. And this gave Yoshimasa the idea to apply this technique to repair Bakohan with um, golden line as a finish. This is considered Japan's very first kintsugi, marking the beginning of this art form. As um, kintsugi gradually spread to different regions in the country, Urushi craftsmen often did kintsugi as a side hustle. And this tradition still exists, including my former kintsugi online instructor, who primarily works in Urushi lacquer crafts. And she does kintsugi in her free time. As a side note, uh, the history of Urushi crafts predates kintsugi by a considerable margin. Lacquered comb and vessel have been found in archaeological site dating back 7,500 years from the Jomon period. So in the modern times, Kintsugi has further evolved into two main categories, traditional and modern. The traditional Kintsugi, that's what I mainly do, uses entirely natural materials, inclu including urushi lacquer and some additives. As a result, it is 100% fruit safe, antibacterial, and bio biodegradable. 
And one significant advantage of uh, traditional kintsugi is that if the repair part comes off, it can easily be repaired again without any damage to the pottery. However, the traditional kintsugi is also very, very time consuming. So depending on the condition of the broken item, even a small repair such as a clean break or a simple crack can take at least two to three months with longer repairs taking up to a year. In contrast, modern kintsugi primarily uses liquid epoxy and putty. The process is more straightforward, making it accessible for even for those who without prior kintsugi experience. The work can be completed in about two to three weeks. However, even if it is food safe epoxy, the use of chemical makes it less suitable for everyday tableware. Also, epoxy is susceptible to heat and impact, and the bonnet parts can detach more quickly compared to the traditional kintsugi. If an item re repaired with instant glue or adhesive breaks, then it makes re repair impossible, rendering the item unusable. <clears throat> Here is some example of modern kintsugi by a local artist, Seiko Kitagawa. She's my friend. Um, she's a great modern kintsugi artist. She has a jewelry store called Fuzoroi, so please check that out. Um, the link should be in the chat now. So depending on your preference and intended use, the modern kintsugi is more accessible and faster, while traditional kintsugi is recommended for items you plan to use regularly or if it holds a lot of, va lot of value to you. Now, let's talk about kintsugi's primary uh, ingredient, urushi lacquer. The urushi lacquer is... Uh, natural resin paint and adhesive derived from sap of urushi tree. There are several interest, really interesting characteristics associated with it. The first char characteristic is related to dry environment. The urushi lacquer requires the presence of moisture to cure properly. The optimal condition for urushi to harden are a temperature between 68 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit and a humidity ranging from 70% to 85%. To maintain the appropriate environment for curing in kintsugi, we use a box called muro made of cedar or cypress wood. The, inside the box, wet clothes are hanged or the spray bottle are used to control the humidity and temperature to the ideal level. I um, use a small wooden shipping container that I DIY'd and put shelvings in similar to the mural shown on the left side of the screen. It has a reptile heater the mine has a reptile heater and a small glass of water inside, inside to control the temperature and humidity. But I've seen others use a cardboard box or inside a closet even. It all kind of depends on where you live, actually. Then once the urushi hardens, it becomes incredibly robust to the extent that it won't even dissolve with bleach. Additionally, it is waterproof, corrosion resistant, and has antibacterial effect. Another characteristic of urushi involves its allergies. 
contact with liquid lacquer can often cause intense itching, very similar to poison ivy. People without resistance to the lacquer may experience severe allergic reactions. Therefore, if urushi gets on your skin, it should be promptly removed. As I mentioned earlier, the urushi solidifies when exposed to moisture. So to prevent this from happening, use oil on the affected area to prevent the lacquer from hardening. Scrape it off with your fingernail and then wash with soap and water. This summer, we had the opportunity to visit Urushi Farm in northern part of Kyoto, also known as Tamba area. According to the farmer we spoke to, there is a higher likelihood of allergic reaction with Japanese Urushi lacquer compared to Chinese lacquer. This is um, attributed to the fact that Chinese lacquer has a higher viscosity due to the advancement or hardening during transport, making it less likely to penetrate the skin upon contact. On the other hand, Japanese lacquer is usually very smoother and has finer particles, particles so increasing the chance of experiencing an allergic reaction even with prompt treatment. The Urushi farmer who shared this story also had a significant swell on her arm and she said that the uh, Urushi splashed on her arm during the previous day's work. So even if you have been working with Urushi lacquer for a long time like her, Japanese Urushi sap can cause severe irritation if you're not careful. Here, um, is there's a link for the this urushi farm so please check that out um, um so despite the recent popularity in japanese urushi crafts 98 percent of the urushi lacquer in the market comes from china and tamba urushi that's where we visited is a non-profit organization preserving and promoting the dying tradition of urushi harvest. They support the industry from cultivating of the seedlings to planting and production and harvest. Okay, That's, now let's talk about the process of uh, kintsugi. The repairing consists of five steps, evaluation, joining, base making, powdering, and polishing. This first evaluation involves examining the number of, number and location of cracks, chips, and fractures, as well as the material of the object. For stoneware, areas around chips can be extremely brittle, and if not addressed properly, they may further break during the repair process, which significantly impact the efficiency of consequent steps. On the other hand, for porcelain, it often has a glassy surface. The fragments can be finer and the gla glazed area, the crack, uh, the cracked area may unevenly peel off. Um, if not addressed carefully during the evaluation, the mending line can appear irregular, affecting the overall appear appearance. It's, it's really essential to consider how we address these issues during restoration process. Next step is joining. And the first step of first ha half of the joining process um, the glue called Mugi Urushi is used. Mugi Urushi is made by kneading wheat flour with water to form gluten. Some traditionalists use cooked rice paste instead of flour, but I don't use that. Raw Urushi lacquer is then 
add it into the mixture until it reaches a mousse-like consistency. This mixture is then applied to the surface of the crack. While it can be immediately bonded, I prefer to wait for about 15 to 20 minutes, allowing the mugi urushi to slightly harden before joining. This helps minimizing misalignment. After bonding, the repaired area is reinforced with the tape to ensure it remains still, and the piece is left to dry in the muro for about a week. And in the first few hours, I try to check on the pottery to confirm there's no misalignment. And the the ne the the next half of the joining process is dealing with cracks and chips. For cracks, roll urushi diluted with turpentine is applied to impede further progression. To address chip, a paste called kokuso urushi is prepared. This paste is made from mixing wood powder and hemp cotton called kokuso to the mugi urushi, the wheat lacquer. The paste is then applied to the chipped area and the shape is formed using fingers, then cure for about a week. Once dry, any excess lacquer is carefully removed using a cutter or sandpaper. And then we move to the base making. This step is really crucial for achieving the radiant finish with the metal powders. In this phase, kuroroiro, this is a black process urushi lacquer is used. The repair surface often contains small indentations and an unevenness. And this step involves applying the lacquer, allowing it to dry, sent down excess, excessive urushi, and repeating the application. Sanding and drying process several times to achieve a really uniform and smooth surface. While this phase may conclude after a few repetitions, in some extreme cases, it may require up to 10 cycles. Once it is completed, the item becomes usable as a pottery and the subsequent pow powdering sprinkle process focuses on enhancing the aesthetic uh, appearance. These, this photo is the uh, the photo of the different type of urushi. The left one in the beige is the raw urushi, and the right one, the the very dark black one, is a black uh, processed urushi um, that I mentioned, the kuroroiro urushi. It's really necessary for the base making, and the middle one is called e urushi. It is the urushi. Uh, process urushi uh, mixed with uh, red clay, and it is uh, required for next step powdering. The next step powdering process is um, app thinly apply a urushi, the red urushi, process urushi to the base area. For repairing heavily damaged items, just working on this process takes about an hour to two hours. This is really critical step where mistakes cannot happen, requiring your full focus and attention. After applying the thin eurushi, I let sit in the room for about 20 to 40 minutes to dry a bit, and then sprinkle gold powders um, with, uh, with brush and let the powder sink in for about 10 minutes and use a silk bowl to sprinkle the powder once again to make sure all the repaired area is covered. Then it dry for about three, three days. 
and uh, for a matte finish you're done at this step but for a shinier finish a process called fungatame powder solidification is then performed applying thin layer of raw urushi lacquer on top of the gold this is to prevent the gold from peeling off and then leaving the pottery in the muro for about a week to fully cure the gold and silver powders does not shine at all without polishing um, i will show you burnishing process later and you will see how it changes and the polishing is the very last step and this very last process in kintsugi the fish teeth traditionally sea bream teeth are used during this process um, sea bream teeth are considered optimal for kintsugi because of, of its shape while a stone agate can also be used but it is too bulky for um, really dedicated dedicate kintsugi work so i do not use it in commission works and i personally um find this step is very uh, most nerve-wracking because the result of whether the previous steps were done correctly becomes apparent here so if the preceding steps were not done correctly the gold may peel off or does not shine at all in that case i have to return to the previous step and this not only wastes time and materials but it also leads to a uh, considerable mental fatigue okay now let's i want to show you the polishing process now here i have the uh, really beautiful green plate small plate and as let's see as you can see, there's a huge crack in the middle and it goes through the bottom too. And there's some, um, the chips here and here. And uh, this is a Seabrin teeth. Um, this is my fingernail, so you can see how small this is. I hope you can see it. And this pointy, sh the uh, the top and the curved shape is really, really crucial for the burnishing process. Um, <clears throat> okay, let's do this. Okay, um, I hope. You can see it clearly. Can you, see, can you see it actually like start changing the color? It's see it's it's getting shinier and shinier. Several times. See now it's really shiny. This is not burnished. You can see it's not like shiny at all. Let's see the other polish right here. yeah now now it's yeah gold and shiny um <clears throat> so this makes the uh the kintsugi and i want to show you a couple more things 
talking about the uh, the really crucial material of the Kintsugi. This. Is the gold powder it doesn't look like the gold aloe at, at all. But this this cost it's probably like uh 180 dollars with this amount. And uh, this is another material. This is the uh this is actually a silver powder doesn't look like a silver at all it's this is a wheat flour it's almost like a wheat so yeah this is the old process of kintsugi and uh now i want to move to the uh the question or q and a session thank you so much tad um so yes if we have quite a, lot, a few minutes left at the end, so please continue to share any questions you had during that presentation in the chat, but we're going to go through and start with some of the ones we received earlier. Um, so Grace and Maggie are asking, do you by any chance um, have any suggestions for DIY at home Kintsugi kits for beginners? Um, they said they know Kwon Mari sells one, but and another person had not so much luck with one bought on Amazon, but a couple of people are interested in a recommendation. Yes. Well, actually, it really depends on if you want to do the modern kintsugi or traditional kintsugi. Um, for modern kintsugi, uh, one of my friend, he... Well, actually, she's my uh, kintsugi teacher. Um, she lives in New York. She sells the modern kintsugi kit, and uh, that's uh, yeah, that's the good way to start. And I will. I don't have a link right now, but uh, I can, yeah, send you a link. Yeah, in a follow up email to this program, we'll include all of the relevant links and vocabulary that Tad went through today. So. Um, look forward to receiving that um, to your email that you registered with. Um, someone asked, uh, can kintsugi be used on glass as well? What are the materials that kintsugi can be used to repair? I'm sorry, could, could you repeat that again? Can kintsugi method be used on glass or other materials? Um, as far as I know, it can be used to glass and wood. One Stephanie asks, um, when using silver, how do you keep it from oxidizing or becoming black? Do you use yeah. or nickel silver or does yeah. the lacquer oh, prevent? Yeah. Great question. Um, I would put the really, really thin layer of uh, raw urushi on top of the silver and wipe it off as much as possible. And that, uh, yeah, that probably keeps from oxidize, oxidizing, but uh, not, it doesn't stay on for a long time. So it probably, I probably, it's gonna that oxidize later, well, sooner or later. Christine asks, do you work on one piece at a time from beginning to finish, or do you usually work on a few pieces at a time? Um, depending on how many pieces I have, but if I have multiple and I do like today is uh, the joining day and next day is going to be a, like, you know, like powering day kind of thing. So I, I work the multiple piece at the same at, at once. Caroline asks if it's possible, do you know, to buy the sea bream tooth in the United States? Um, I don't think so. I wish it, yeah, it happens. But uh, yeah, I got this, uh, the sea bream tooth from a um, Kintsugi supplier in Kyoto. 
or if you go to the Costco or somewhere and get the like sea breeze sea bream there and you might be able to like you know get the the tooth part and DIY <laughs> yeah exactly um Kathleen asks is it possible to safely use kintsugi tea bowl for chanoyu they've heard that it might not be safe it is it, it is if it's uh the bowl is traditionally repaired then 100 percent food safe um Alyssa asks where do you find inspiration for your own kintsugi um i go on a social media to get inspiration and also my uh wife is a designer so she yeah gives me uh, really good advice and ideas i was i was actually kind of curious what exactly is happening in the process as i saw your polishing it changed from like a very just matte plain yellow to a completely different finish how does um, do you know how that is happening um so <clears throat> sorry actually the the gold powder as if you see it in the microscope it's a sphere and the um the, um, the so sphere particles gold particles uh stick on the surface of the repair part and with the, the sebring teeth um, it sounds down the top part of the the gold particle and it makes the flat surface all the way on the uh, the repair area and that makes the the kintsugi shine yeah. some people um i really like to use uh, the tooth because it's quicker and also it's really um, handy to uh, do the work but also some uh, really traditional kintsugi artists use finger and like <clears throat> really like scrape it at, um, press really hard um, on the repair part and really like wiggle it or scrape it, it with your fingernail uh, fi fingers yeah that's really extreme but it shines really really well one question just came in how does rice flour work with kintsugi if you could repeat how you um, use rice flour sure this? sure so cooked rice paste it contains uh it doesn't contains gluten but it's really similar to uh, gluten it gets really like mushy so mixing that with um, um, the raw urushi makes like the glue kind of uh, the glue it makes it glue so you can use that and uh, actually the I think the beginning of the kintsugi people are definitely using the uh the uh, rice paste instead of flour a question from leslie is it possible to make your own mugi paste yeah sure i i, I usually make my mugi paste um every time i do the joining process and how and, would you what is your process yeah oh um so i need uh have the the wheat flour and mix it with water and make like the dough kind of thing um and then just add the raw urushi until it gets the uh, mousse like consistency um nate asks is there a limit to the size of the piece that you can repair in theory, no, uh, it, because if the the plate or bowl is get bigger, and you see, you will see that it gets thicker. But <clears throat> for those ones, um, I usually put the drill on on it on the side of the cracked area and make a hole and put the uh, the metal into it and so it holds 
the uh, the broken parts really well. Uh, it won't it enhance the the repair part. And for the smaller ones, I just do it without the holes and or the metals. Is the metal reinforcement a traditional technique or modern? Um, that I don't know, but I'm sure it's. I think it's modern. I guess. Um, Stephanie asks, "How long does kintsugi repair in a well-used object? So, in a daily use, would it? How long would it?" It's a great question. Um, the one that my uh, my teacher repaired last for five years and still still um, holding the the shape and looks good. Um, Kathleen asks that they would think that some break patterns would make for a better final result than others. Um, ideally, do you choose only certain broken items to repair? I prefer, uh, that's yes and no. I prefer to repair less broken ones because if it breaks really heavily, then the the repairing process takes really really long time so yeah but uh yeah um karen asks do you make your own gold powder or... i wish i could do that but uh, i go to supplier and uh, buy it from them do kintsugi artists um use ever unwanted or broken gold jewelry scraps to use for mm. in, ah, in theory I think it can be used but I never tried it or I never yeah I never didn't even think about it it might be a good uh inspiration for my next pro project can I show everybody what I commissioned the tab to make do? So can everybody see? This is the ball he fixed for us. <laughs> and it turned out beautifully, so we're very happy. And I think it looks better than the perfect one. <laughs> so here we go. And Joanne put um, his Instagram uh, contact information in there. So, and I know he posts a lot of his uh, current works um, and uh, real of uh, his uh, process. So, if anybody's curious, like follow him. <laughs> Thank you. Joyce asks if we wanted to repair something that didn't need to mm -hmm. be safe, like vase or something, mm -hmm. what metals could be used instead of gold so it's more affordable oh you could use silver silver is actually not that expensive so i would use silver or uh tin is another option or lid is yeah some people use lid for the you know decorative uh items and if people um, would like to commission you for work, would that be through Instagram or through the email that you provided? Um, yeah, whichever is fine. Um, sorry. Currently, I'm on in the process of making Facebook page as well as website. So yeah, but right now, please reach out to me with uh, my gmail.com address or Instagram. It's the link or address is in the uh, chat. So thank you. Um, Stephanie asks, do you use copper or brass for the finish? Um, right now, the, the substitute of the gold that I have is only brass. So I use the brass. But in the future, I want to try to do copper as well. 
do a little promotion or ask people for help. Uh, currently, I'm trying to find somewhere to do the uh, the small Kinski workshop, and I I'm been reaching out to libraries. So if you guys have any place that I can possibly reach out to to have the uh, the workshop, please let me know. Or um, as and also Joanne mentioned, I'll do a uh, commission and also do private Kintsugi lessons. So if you are interested in that, please reach out to me as well. And thank you so much to our speaker tonight, Tad. If you are interested, have any questions, or even would like to commission him, please reach out to the email and um, Instagram, I think is the main social media that was provided. Thank you so much, everyone, for attending today. And thank you, Tad. Thank you.